It's a site where China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, was laid to rest around 2,000 years ago. It becomes clear to the research team that these statues were carved and then buried as an army to protect the emperor in his afterlife. Deep beneath the soil of China's Shani province lies one of humanity's greatest unsolved mysteries, the tomb of Qin Yu Huang. China's first emperor has captivated imagination for over two millennia. Recent claims about DNA sequencing from the emperor's remains have reignited global interest in what might be hidden within this massive mausoleum. What secrets could this ancient tomb reveal about the enigmatic ruler who unified China? Our tales of mercury rivers, elaborate traps, and supernatural guardians based on reality or mere legend? And why, despite our advanced technology, does the main burial chamber remain sealed and unexplored? The story of this remarkable tomb combines archaeological fact with persistent mystery, creating an enduring puzzle that continues to challenge our understanding of ancient China's most powerful ruler. To comprehend the significance of Qin Shi Huang's tomb, we must first understand the extraordinary man buried within it. Born in 259 BCE as Ying Zhen, he ascended to the throne of the Qin state at just 13 years old. What followed was one of history's most remarkable campaigns of conquest and unification. The first emperor's impact on Chinese civilization cannot be overstated. He standardized weight, measures, currency, and writing across his vast new empire. He ordered the construction of a massive network of roads and canals, facilitating trade and military movement. The accidental discovery of the Terracotta Army in 1974 by local farmers drilling a well near Xi'an stands as one of archaeology's most spectacular moments. What emerged from the soil wasn't just a collection of ancient artifacts, but an entire subterranean army, thousands of life-size clay warriors, each with unique facial features, arranged in precise military formation, ready to serve their emperor in the afterlife. This vast army represents just a fraction of the emperor's necropolis. The entire tomb complex covers approximately 38 square miles, roughly the size of San Francisco, making it one of the largest burial sites ever constructed. Within this massive area, archaeologists have identified over 180 subsidiary tombs, numerous pits containing sacrificial animals, rare birds, and additional terracotta figures. The terracotta warriors themselves display remarkable sophistication. Standing between 5 feet 8 inches and 6 feet 2 inches tall, each figure was individually crafted with distinct facial features, hairstyles, and clothing details specific to their military rank. Originally, they held real weapons, bronze swords, spears, and crossbows, and were painted in vibrant colors that sadly faded within minutes of excavation. Even if archaeologists did have access to the emperor's body, extracting viable DNA would present enormous challenges. Ancient DNA degrades rapidly under most conditions, particularly in warm, humid environments like those found in central China. While preservation might be better in a sealed tomb environment, over 2,200 years of decomposition would significantly impact DNA quality. The technical limitations of ancient DNA analysis also pose significant obstacles. While the field has advanced remarkably in recent decades, allowing successful sequencing of Neanderthal genomes and 5,000-year-old Egyptian mummies, these achievements required exceptionally well-preserved samples and cutting-edge laboratory techniques. Any claimed analysis of Qin Yu Huang's complete genome would far exceed current technological capabilities for samples of that age and preservation state. Another red flag in these sensational claims involves a specific detail supposedly revealed by genetic analysis. Reports often include highly specific information about the emperor's appearance, disease conditions, or ancestry that simply cannot be determined from DNA alone. Modern genetic analysis can provide some general insights into physical traits but cannot, for example, reconstruct exactly what someone looked like or definitively identify specific psychological characteristics. The spread of these false claims reflects a broader pattern of pseudo-archaeology, speculative or fictional narratives presented as legitimate scientific discoveries. Such stories often gain traction because they appeal to our fascination with ancient mysteries and our desire for definitive answers about enigmatic historical figures. Legitimate archaeological studies of the first emperor focus instead on what can be verified through careful excavation and analysis. Scholars have examined the emperor's likely appearance and health through contemporary accounts, artistic representations, and comparative studies of remains from his era. Historical texts describe him as tall, 
with a prominent nose and wasp-like eyes, though these descriptions may be influenced by political agendas. Chinese authorities maintain strict protocols regarding excavation and analysis at the tomb complex. Any significant discovery, particularly involving the emperor's remains, will be announced through official archaeological channels, published in peer-reviewed journals, and subjected to rigorous scientific scrutiny before being accepted by the academic community. Excavations in the eastern section of the complex in 2021 uncovered a previously unknown pit containing her armor and weapons different from those found with the terracotta warriors. These items appear to represent actual battle gear rather than ceremonial replicas, suggesting they may have belonged to the emperor's elite personal guard. Chemical analysis of metal traces on the armor indicates contact with human bodily fluids, raising the disturbing possibility that these guards may have been sacrificed to accompany their ruler in death. Most recently, archaeologists have begun employing environmental DNA sampling techniques around the perimeter of the main burial mound. This innovative approach can detect genetic material that has leached into the surrounding soil over millennia. Preliminary findings have identified traces of exotic animals not native to ancient China, supporting historical accounts that the emperor collected rare creatures from across his empire and beyond to populate his tomb complex. The Emperor's immortality quest perhaps no aspect of Qin Shang's life better explains his elaborate tomb than his obsessive quest for immortality. Throughout his reign, the first emperor devoted enormous resources to extending his life indefinitely, a pursuit that ironically may have hastened his death at age 49. Historical records, particularly Sima Qian's records of grand historian, describe the emperor sending expeditions across his realm searching for elixir of immortality. One famous mission dispatched the alchemist Xu Fu with hundreds of young men and women to search for the mythical island of Pongli where mortals supposedly lived. This expedition never returned. Some historians speculate they may have reached Japan, explaining certain cultural similarities that developed between the two civilizations. The emperor's fascination with immortality was deeply rooted in early Daoist alchemical traditions. He regularly consumed immortality pills concocted by court alchemists, compounds that typically contain cinnabi, a mercury sulfide mineral believed to promote longevity. Modern toxicology reveals a tragic irony. These mercury-based elixirs likely cause chronic poisoning, producing symptoms including paranoia, erratic behavior, and cognitive decline, all characteristics described in historical accounts of the emperor's final years. As he aged, Qin Chu Huang reportedly became increasingly secretive about his movements, frequently changing sleeping quarters and allowing few to know his exact location, behavior consistent with a growing paranoia symptomatic of mercury poisoning. His fear of assassination merged with supernatural concerns, leading him to employ magicians and spiritual advisors alongside his regular security forces. Archaeological evidence supports these historical accounts. Chemical analysis of preserved Chinera medicinal containers has revealed traces of mercury compounds along with gold and jade particles, materials believed to promote longevity. Excavations around the emperor's palaces have uncovered specialized laboratories apparently dedicated to producing alchemical remedies. The emperor's immortality obsession manifested in his governance as well. He ordered nationwide searches for individuals claiming knowledge of immortality techniques, offering substantial rewards for useful information. When an immortality method failed to produce results, the responsible advisor faced severe punishment, sometimes execution. This created a dangerous cycle where alchemists produced increasingly potent and toxic elixirs to demonstrate immediate effects, further poisoning the emperor. In a final twist of fate, historical accounts suggest Qin Shuang died while traveling in eastern China searching for immortality elixir. His death was reportedly kept secret for weeks while his body was transported back to the capital in a carriage filled with rotting fish to mask the smell of decomposition. This elaborate deception prevented political instability until court officials could arrange succession. Modern technology and tomb exploration in recent decades have transformed our ability to study Chincha Huang's tomb without disturbing its contents. These advanced methods have opened new windows into the structure, composition, and layout of the burial complex while respecting its archaeological integrity. Ground penetrating radar, GPR, has proven particularly valuable, allowing archaeologists to visualize subsurface features by sending radar pulses into the ground and analyzing their reflections. Recent GPR surveys have revealed previously unknown chambers surrounding the main burial mound, including what appears to be a ceremonial hall where funeral rites may have been performed. 
The technology has also identified unusual density patterns, suggesting the presence of metal objects and possible mechanized traps, lending credence to historical accounts of the tomb's defensive systems. Magnetometry, which measures variations in the Earth's magnetic field caused by buried features, has proven especially useful in tracking the mercury concentrations within the tomb. A comprehensive magnetometric survey conducted in 2017 detected strong magnetic anomalies in patterns corresponding to China's major river systems, providing compelling evidence for Simon Chen's description of mercury water weights. These readings indicate the mercury remains in liquid form after two millennia, suggesting a sophisticated containment system within the tomb. Multispectral imaging technologies originally developed for satellite reconnaissance, now allow archaeologists to identify subtle differences in vegetation and soil conditions above buried structures at the emperor's tomb. This technique has revealed the outlines of processional roads, subsidiary buildings, and defensive structures that have left no visible surface trace but affect the growth patterns of plants above them. Perhaps most exciting is the application of muon tomography, a technique that uses naturally occurring cosmic particles to penetrate dense materials, similar to how X-rays create medical images. Muon detectors placed around the tomb can generate three-dimensional visualizations of interior spaces. A pilot study in 2019 successfully identified several large chambers within the main burial mound, including one massive central space consistent with the imperial burial chamber described in historical texts. Environmental DNA sampling represents another innovative approach. By analyzing soil samples from around the tomb for trace genetic material, scientists can identify organic materials without excavation. Recent Edna studies have detected genetic signatures of exotic hardwoods not native to the region, suggesting imported materials were used in tomb construction. More surprisingly, Researchers found DNA markers for Southeast Asian plant species, supporting historical claims that the emperor imported exotic flora to create an idealized landscape surrounding his final resting place. Drone-based LADAR, light detection and ranging, technology has revolutionized mapping of the broader necropolis. By firing laser pulses from above and measuring their return times, archaeologists have created precise three-dimensional models revealing subtle topographical features invisible to the naked eye. This mapping has identified dozens of previously unknown structures and ceremonial pathways arranged in patterns suggesting cosmic alignments. Chinese authorities have partnered with international research institutions to develop specialized robots of potential future exploration. These devices, designed to navigate narrow passages and withstand potentially hazardous conditions, carry sensors that can analyze their composition, detect structural weaknesses, and capture high-resolution imagery without human presence. Prototype robots have already been tested in replica environments, mimicking the expected conditions within the tomb. Mercury contamination poses both conservation and safety challenges. The high mercury concentration detected within the tomb presents serious health risks to excavators and conservators. Moreover, mercury may have interacted with burial materials over two millennia, creating unstable compounds that could rapidly degrade upon exposure to different environmental conditions. Developing protocols to handle this toxic element safely while preserving artifacts remains an unsolved technical problem. Structural integrity concerns further complicate potential excavation. Ground-penetrating radar suggests portions of the interior structure may have weakened over time. Any excavation effort risks catastrophic collapse, potentially destroying priceless artifacts and endangering archaeological workers. Engineers estimate that developing sufficient structural reinforcement technologies could require decades of research and preparation. Beyond these technical issues lie important cultural and ethical considerations. The tomb represents one of China's most significant historical and cultural treasures, directly connected to the foundation of Chinese imperial identity. Chinese cultural authorities approach its management with extraordinary care, weighing scientific curiosity against preservation responsibility. Many Chinese archaeologists argue that excavation should wait until technology is advanced enough to ensure proper conservation of everything discovered. There are also ethical questions about disturbing what was explicitly created as an eternal resting place. Unlike many ancient tombs that were routinely looted shortly after burial, this mausoleum has remained largely intact as its creator intended. Some scholars and cultural leaders argue that respecting these intentions carries meaningful ethical weight in archaeological decision-making. The site's UNESCO World Heritage status imposes additional conservation requirements. 
International standards emphasize preservation over excavation when appropriate alternative research methods exist, with modern non-invasive technologies providing substantial information without disturbance. These standards currently favor maintaining the tomb sealed state. Chinese authorities have implemented a measured, long-term approach to the site. Current policy focuses on thorough investigation of peripheral areas while developing increasingly sophisticated conservation technologies. Specialized research facilities near the site work specifically on preservation techniques for Chinera artifacts, with particular attention to color preservation, organic material stabilization, and mercury remediation. Similar royal tombs around the world, the tomb of Qin Shi Huang, while extraordinary, belongs to a global tradition of elaborate royal burials. Comparing it with other significant tombs around the world provides valuable context for understanding both its uniqueness and its place within broader patterns of how ancient civilizations honored their rulers. Egypt's Valley of the Kings offers perhaps the most famous parallel. Pharaohs of the New Kingdom period, circa 1550 to 1070 BC, were buried in rock-cut tombs filled with treasures, artistic depictions of the afterlife, and protective arrangements against tomb rubbers. Tutankhamun's relatively modest tomb, discovered largely intact in 1922, contained over 5,000 artifacts, suggesting the staggering wealth that larger royal tombs might have held. Like Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum, these Egyptian tombs combine practical burial needs with religious symbolism, creating microcosms of the afterlife as conceptualized within their culture. The excavation at Tutankhamun's tomb provides an instructive case study in conservation challenges. Despite archaeologist Howard Carter's relatively careful methods for his time, many artifacts suffered damage from exposure to different environmental conditions. Organic materials like textiles and wooden objects deteriorated rapidly, and even metal items showed unexpected corrosion patterns. These experiences inform modern archaeological practices and highlight why Chinese authorities proceed so cautiously with Chin-era tomb excavation. In Mesoamerica, Maya and Aztec royal tombs demonstrate another approach to elite burial. The tomb of Kinich Janapakol in Palenque, Mexico, features an elaborate sarcophagus lid depicting the ruler's journey to the underworld, surrounded by jade offerings and sacrificial remains. As with Qin Shi Huang's tomb, the Maya ruler was buried within a pyramid structure representing the cosmic order, though on a smaller scale than the Chinese example. Interestingly, both cultures incorporated water symbolism into their royal burials, mercury rivers in China, water-themed art in the Maya context, reflecting how control over water represented imperial power. European royal tombs offer different comparative perspectives. The 7th century Anglo-Saxon ship burial at Sutton Hoo, England, contained magnificent grave goods but no preserved human remains, creating archaeological questions similar to those surrounding Qin Shi Huang's unexcavated chamber. The Viking Osberg ship burial in Norway preserved organic materials remarkably well due to specific soil conditions, providing hope that similar preservation might exist within sealed chambers of the first emperor's tomb. The excavation of these European burials demonstrates how advancing technology improves archaeological outcomes. The Sutton who excavation in 1939 recovered tremendous information, but modern re-examination using technologies unavailable to the original excavators has revealed significant details they missed. This experience supports the Chinese approach of waiting for improved technology before disturbing the central imperial burial. Royal Sithian tombs, Kurgans, from the Eurasian steppe contain striking parallels to Qin practices. Frozen tombs in the Altai Mountains preserved extraordinary organic materials, including tattooed human remains, textiles, and wooden artifacts. These tombs frequently contain sacrifice horses arranged in formations reminiscent of how the terracotta warriors stand in military array. This similarity raises interesting questions about possible cultural connections across the ancient Eurasian continent. One significant difference between Qin Shi Huang's tomb and many others worldwide involves scale and labor investment. While most royal tombs represent considerable resources, the Chinese example exceeds nearly all others in sheer size, complexity, and workforce mobilization. The estimated 700,000 workers required over nearly four decades of construction dwarf figures for most comparable projects. Only certain Egyptian pyramids and Mesoamerican complexes approach similar scale. Subscribe now and become a part of Expedition Diaries for more.